the Stockwell Park estate to be my G-spot. I like it in there. I've got a right mixture of people in there. If you ask the residents here, as soon as they get past the wall around the estate, it's like, we're home, we're safe, people will look after people. We live in there, your cousin's there, your auntie's there, I mean, your sister's around the corner. That's the estate for you. Like the heart of Stockwell Park to stay where all the kids come to. Stockwell Park Community Centre. We're here live and direct. This is where we all meet up, man. Here it is. Peace, viewers. One of the homeowners come here. Table tennis, pool. What you have to pay 50p for. And it used to be for free. In our days, the only time we saw computers was in prison. Table tennis tables was in prison. Snooker tables was in prison. We have church here, um, therapy groups, and Shul Start used to come here, but they've still got baby facilities. It's good, it's good. But it's rang, right bang in the middle of the ghetto, that's the thing. But it's good, it's got most of the boys off the block, so that's all right. You know, we're open Christmas Day as well. We have somewhere that we are just constantly here and we're open. Hi, I'm Aaron. I work here. I'm not working underneath these conditions. I'm here every day, commissioned to work one till ten. And he's the paid person. Unbelievable. But I never ever get in on time. I'm always there like four o'clock. Skin colour in it, you never, you know, we're just always late. Yeah. These are, these are the, these are my extended family. Say hi, boys. <laughs> I'm from Loughborough, the real end. This is Stockwell. This is like the little made up, made up, bad boy wannabe kind of susu susu ends. No, 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 we're not bad man, we're, we're businessmen in Stockwell. Businessmen, businessmen, not business bad men. Men. That's that guy there, that's Rudy. Old school, old school. He beats up the phone here. Hi Rudy, say hi. Yeah, I need to use the phone. <laughs> Juan. Hello, everyone. This is the good guy of Stockwell. I like him. This is his brother. Yo. Mauricio. Mauricio is a troublemaker. <laughs> say hi, Liam. This is Junior. Junior, say hi. We have a little film production crew yeah. going on. He got banished from Stockwell Club for reasons I won't go into now. Let's just say food in the kitchen went missing. What's this? Can you hear this? Aaron, let me show you my wife soon to be though. This is his wife soon to be. The page cannot really be displayed. Uh, I think she's, I think she's... Oh, you want to know about the office, huh? It stinks. It stinks. Think that, <laughs> smells a bit catty in here. Typical Stockholm girl, she's been pregnant three times in like eight months. That's a Loughborough joke. No, I ain't saying that with my face on there. They'll get me, they'll get me. But yeah, soon this is where I'll be sitting, like this is my office. Yo. Don't show Julie this though. <laughs> Squill up. I moved here in 1981. Within half an hour of moving in, we've been broken into. We've burgled. 15 times in the first year and it wasn't just a little bit burgled it wasn't they came in and they nicked something from you they nicked everything from you yeah. sound system tv, TV kids lot. clothes <laughs> underwear food from the cupboards you were left with nothing 
they break into your car and then they write stuff on the windscreen in lipstick like, next week I'm going to fucking rape you and stuff like that. They nick your kid's buggy, they nick your kid's cot, you know, they nick your kid's nappies. Social workers wouldn't come on the estate, the police didn't come on the estate, the fire engines didn't come on the estate and nobody spoke to each other. You didn't really realise that you were living in hell at the time, but you were. In my time, it was like it's open for everybody, any criminal, to do anything they want. We could just terrorise the place. We did terrorise the place. You know, people were, I would say, sometimes really shit scared. I've seen so many bullets pass my head, you know. But it's getting a lot better than it used to be. About, I'd say about seven years ago, it was terrible around here. Oh, far, far better, but 100% better now, isn't it? You might hear the one or two, or oh, should I, never cram up. One or two little fighting here and there, but mugging us, so it's not really all that. People rarely get mugged around here. When I was a kid, there used to be bridges all over the estate, bridges, and you used to be able to start from this block and walk to Brixton without touching the floor. Yeah. You used to go from bridges to bridges, but they took, they're taking that off because I think it's crime. I would say I'm part of the reason that they've done up the security and all these security doors and stuff like that because people used to come and find their doors lying in their, in their front porch, you know what I mean, and everything gone, so that was it. So that is what's done, they've done now. They've really, it's not easy to burgle a place no more, except for Barrett, Barrett House, that's quite easy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> When this community decided that it was going to sort of stand up and be counted and run the estate itself, that's really when the change really happened and people looked upon their neighbour not as a pain in the neck but actually as a resource and somebody who might be able to help them and they could see that a community itself can change things around. We created a charity called the Stockwell Park Community Trust. We got our hands on the housing budget by serving the right to manage, where we got three and a half million pounds from the council to run the housing estate. But we'd also gone out and got 42 million pounds worth of capital investment off the government. So when we hit the ground in 1995, we had 42 million pounds to spend on the houses. Um, you would, you know, put window locks on the windows, you put multi-secure doors on. But another thing we did, we took all the big barriers down and we created low fences and we used bright colours, and where, where there was sort of iron railings, we put bushes. You keep talking to us about Secure by Design, we keep talking to you about us wanting to live together as a community. Julie understands the people from this community more than a lot of other people from the community, and that's what she's supposed to understand our centre, because she ran this centre. I think without Julie, this centre would ever be open. She fought for us, fought for this club. Okay, we'll back you all the way. We have no control over those guys at all. She opened the centre at 10 o'clock in the morning and some day she's still in here at 11 o'clock at night, coming up to 12 o'clock. Apologise. Is that still that way? Let me call you go, 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 go. Julie's like a mother to some of us. Can we have some of this? Oh, I've been Julie, on this man. She's good. She's a good person. She helped me. And sometimes when people is be rude to me, she helped me. She has restored my faith to some extent in humanity. She has saved me a lot of the time from um, reverting to criminal activity. She has shown me that there is another side to despondency and depression. She has helped me. She is, in my opinion, a very altruistic lady. <laughs>